Hi, I'm Seamless, and this is the beginning of How to Use Citrus, brought to you by Sonic Academy. This is the first video, so in this video we're going to explain the theory of synthesis that uh, Citrus utilizes. Citrus is an FM synth. While it can do plenty of other um, kinds of stuff, it can actually do uh, additive and subtractive synthesis. I hate that word. But uh, its primary sort of business for existing is FM. So let's talk about what FM is, how it works, and then after that we'll talk about how to actually use Citrus to accomplish goals with FM. So, FM. FM stands for frequency modulation. And the purpose behind it is that you're modulating the frequency, otherwise known as the pitch of a sound, really, really fast. There's a sort of a differentiation in speed when we're talking about this kind of modulation, with the idea that we're automating essentially the pitch of one oscillator by the speed of another oscillator. And the difference is, is we, th we think of something called an LFO, which stands for a low frequency oscillator, and then there's audio rate, which is what we're gonna be using here. Really, 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 really bleh, realistically, we can use both. We can have, we can take an oscillator and we can make it modulate another oscillator, but do so so slow. that we can actually see it do what it's doing. And it behaves more or less like we'd expect uh, an LFO at that speed to actually behave. If we said, if we said for example, like this is, a, this is a controller of a sine wave modulating the pitch of another sine wave, and it's going up and down, it's doing what we, what we think of. Audio rate. The difference between LFO and audio rate is, is sort of different for everybody, but the point sort of is that the low frequency oscillation is so slow that you can't discern a tone. You can't tell what note it is. Even though it, it does have a note, a technical note, because it's just a division of faster tones that we eventually figure out, okay, well, 4 hertz is something. Let's see, I think 4.4 .4 hertz would be A, because A, a 440, you know, to divide that eventually you get... You get um, a lower octave of A, but no human is ever going to hear that as actually being a tone. And then audio rate is where it's so fast that we don't hear individual oscillation anymore, and we can only hear a tone. So like I said, it's going to be different for everybody depending on what kind of, like, what grade your hearing is and that kind of thing, but that's more or less the point. The coolest about FM is that um, modulating the pitch so fast at a rate that we can't discern individual oscillation creates whole new tones. And this is why the type of synthesis is quite widely used. So on and so forth. To understand how we want to use FM, we have to understand how FM actually is working. Because so far, I've given you the impression that FM is essentially like having a group of LFOs that are just running really fast on the pitch. And we have various different shapes, that kind of thing, and to act more or less as we'd expect. Except that's totally not what's happening. For example, if I play a tone like this, and I have it going slow enough that, you know, it's we can hear it, see it do its thing. With, when I do it with a sine wave, we get more or less what we expect out of it. But, watch what happens when we put a triangle wave in here. Let's make sure it's a real triangle wave. Ah. That's a bit odd. Especially since that's not the behavior you'd expect to have a triangle wave. That's the behavior you'd expect to add something like a square wave. But if I, if I use a square wave, or a saw wave, not much happens, and what does happen seems a little bit weird. And this has to do with a very simple fact, that FM isn't really directly modulating pitch, at least in the digital world. Um, most uh, plugins that are FM work in this particular way, where we're not modulating pitch, we're modulating phase. And the reason we're modulating phase is there's some, there's some process limitation about directly modulating pitch. I'm not totally sure about why, that is, but um, to get around this, it's modulating phase. The um, Yamaha DX7, which was the first digital FM synthesizer, I think, um, did it this way as well. And most uh, most other FM, like digital FM since like FM8 and Citrus and whatever, uh, mimic 
how that guy, how that synth does what it does. In fact, most uh, most of these synths will actually have an ability for you to load in uh, Yamaha DX7 SZX files, which is pretty hilarious um, because of how like on point its, its conversion is. But why and how? I guess we're gonna talk about the why, but here, here's the how. As it turns out, if you if you take the phase of something and you modulate it. At first, nothing happens. You're changing the starting position of the waveform. That's what the phase is, is, is if you're familiar with that. Essentially, what we're changing is when in the waveform's oscillation does it actually begin. So we remove the phase while it's not playing, and then play it at a static phase, it still sounds like the same original pitch, because no matter where you start in the, the waveform, it's still the same length of period, and so you get the same oscillation. So if we start, if we move the phase while it's playing, we can see that it's actually altering the pitch of the sound. Why is that? Why is that though? It's essentially a little tiny uh, controlled example of what's called the Doppler effect. And you've experienced the Doppler effect all the time in, in life. If like you, you hear essentially the idea is that like if you're standing somewhere and a sound source is approaching you, you hear the sound that it's generating, but then as it's approaching you, it gets higher in pitch, and then as it as it moves away from you, it gets lower in pitch. This is most commonly seen in like uh, sirens on cars or trains or something. That's the Doppler effect. And essentially this is because if you change the phase of something while it's playing, you're altering the apparent size of the period which is the pitch. So in order to accomplish digital FM, what the what the uh, oscillators are doing are that they're modulating each other's phase, which means that the, 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 the waveforms themselves no longer mean directly what they look like. Because you, you might have seen it when I, was, when I was moving, when I was moving phase with the manual control over here is that if I made tiny adjustments, the pitch movement was tiny, but if I made fast adjustments, then the pitch movement was large. So it's not so much about where we're going or what shape, it's about the speed at which we're going there. That's cut, that's changing uh, the, the motion of, of pitch. So if you look at what a sine wave is doing, we can see that, okay, cool, it's, it's getting up, let's use this view. It's going pretty fast, it slows down, it gets pretty fast again, it slows down, it gets pretty fast. It's smoothly transitioning between all of these states of speed. So that means that we get, essentially, up to one pitch, down to another pitch, and more or less what a sine wave looks like. No biggie. But then we look at a triangle wave. We're looking at that it's it's moving forward, but it's it's going in that direction in one solid unchanging speed, and then it's changing to another solid one unchanging speed. So that means we get one solid unchanging tone and another solid one changing tone. That is why this waveform is doing that. The sort of the, the term that we're looking for for this is the change in slope. The change in slope was, was determining uh, the change in pitch for the modulated operator. Now, this also explains another particular, particular phenomenon where if we play, if we increase the pitch of the modulator, this is a modulator carrier relationship. We have a carrier waveform and we have the modulator waveform. The modulator waveform is the thing that is changing or modulating the carrier's uh, parameter, in which case is the pitch. But if I increase the, the pitch of the modulator, we see that the the, the, the range of, of FM is actually increasing. And the reason for that is because if, we're, if we increase the speed of it, we're increasing how fast, like, what this waveform represents in terms of speed, which means that it's changing how fast, like, how much the pitch changes. And we, of course, have to adjust <laughs> FM level if we, want, if we want it to be comparable to the original amount. So, but what what is this doing as is as as another important part? Because how you change like FM level is not immediately obvious. Because um, you can see, obviously, we could just do this, that's whatever. But in, in terms of practical automation sense, you can't automate these knobs. Some other other uh, FM plugins will let you automate what whatever thing is determining the linkage just fine. But in all FM, all digital FM, what's controlling this uh, amount is the volume of that op oscillator so if i if i'm something and i want to change the intensity i can change the volume of the modulating operator (laughs) 
that's how you change the FM overall FM amount. And this, like in 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 the case of Citrus specifically, this matrix is really just about what the routing is that you're going to change. And then you can there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can change it. We'll, we'll explain that in the ensuing videos where we're talking about the UI and that whole thing. And yeah, that's uh, everything that I think matters about how FM works. Cool. So this video, you, you'll probably want to refer back to this once we go over how all the UI elements work and how changing works, that kind of thing. Oh, wait, no, I did want to explain what's up with saw waves and square waves. So um, we did, I mentioned you know, this doesn't really do a lot and this doesn't really do a lot. But like this waveform, we have to consider what's going on in the terms of slope. So in saw wave land, we have one solid unchanging direction and then it snaps back up to the beginning. So we get a different pitch. But we're, we're, it's, it's not, that, that snapping weirdness is happening up there because the waveform is it's not just starting up there immediately. It has to move. It just moves really, really fast. Same thing with the square wave. Only in this case, this is actually still the original pitch. Much like the saw wave, it is zero, or rather, 360 degrees phase and then zero degrees phase. Phase is often d is discussed in terms of a radial idea because it comes back around and that kind of thing. And 360 degrees and zero degrees are the same position. So this means that this is just solid original pitch and solid original pitch. And that's a little bit weird. The The reality of the, of the square saw wave, rather, is a bit more interesting because this means that this one change in pitch is actually a different pitch. Which means, uh, we'll discuss later in the sound design portion, we can use square, damn, saw waves to um, elicit something called oscillator sync, which is a lot of fun. But yeah, that's a lot of interesting things. So, but beyond that, um, there's a different kind of uh, waveform set that was referred to in other, in other FM synths as the TX waveform set. And these exist to allow you to do more specific control over things. So for example... What if I wanted to have control over FM that was like what an LFO saw wave would be, where it starts up high and goes down low and then cuts back up as opposed to completely oscillating around? Because basically the way we describe what's happening, it doesn't seem like there's a way to do that. And that's where these waveforms come into play. Um, and Citrus allows you to basically turn any waveform into these various waveforms. Other synths will just have um, versions of these waveforms that have these characteristics. But if I, for example, turn on the half mode, with the correct polarity, this is essentially saying that only half of the original sine wave oscillation is actually happening, and then it restarts. And now we have what the saw wave motion would be. And so on and so forth. That's the purpose of these modifiers up here to alter various waveforms. That's why they exist. It's, they exist. They do have an interesting sort of quality themselves, and they do sound particularly interesting. But their primary existence is to give you a, a different level of control for FM oscillators, and that's a lot of fun. So um, now we have covered everything that I think matters in terms of how FM works. It really took me kind of a while to get this myself, just because a lot of how it works is just super unintuitive. Like, there's, there's not really a reason why you would know any of this other than just because someone told you. But now that we do, we can start talking about how the UI in Citrus works, and then we'll get into various sound design options. And boy, oh boy, there are just a lot of sound design we can do with this. Anyway, moving on. <laughs>